Okay, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Uh, if you have any problems or questions about uh, the way I speak, uh, if you cannot hear me well, please um, uh, send me a message. Send us a message, okay? Uh, so I will start, I will be, okay, I will be looking at your questions, but uh, first I will go through my presentation, and then uh, I will try to answer the questions at the end, okay? So my name is Maxim Nikitin, I am an academic head of the ISIS Master's Program in Financial Economics at the National Research University High School of Economics. And I will tell you a little bit about us, about ISIS, and especially about the Master's Program. Uh, the main uh, feature, the main, um, the main feature of our program is that it's an international program. It uh, has been established and it is run in collaboration with the uh, with LSE, with the London School of Economics and Political Science. Okay, mm, ICEF was established. Uh, I mean, our program is a part of ICEF academic programs. ISAF itself was established uh, 20 years, more than 20 years ago, in 1997, also with academic support of the London School of Economics, as a, an autonomous college, as an autonomous department within the High School of Economics. And uh, it was, uh, from the beginning, it was supported by the largest um, uh, Russian financial institution, institutions. And the main mission of ISAF was provide the modern cutting edge economics education in Russia comparable to what is um, available at the leading universities, at the world leading universities. So ISAF today is a kind of mini university within a university and it offers two academic programs, a bachelor double degree program in economics and a master's program in financial economics since 2007. Now ISEF has well over 1,000 students, more than 1,500 alumni, and uh, over 150 faculty members, including part-time faculty. And uh, more than 20 of them uh, hold PhD degrees uh, from leading Western universities. Uh, but ISEF is not only a place to study and learn, it's also a place where research is conducted, we have two international research laboratories in financial economics and in experimental and behavioral economics. Okay, so what are the advantages? Uh, the main advantage of uh, our program is, of course, its international standard. Uh, we, uh, our graduates receive, uh, on top of the uh, Russian uh, master's degree in economics, they also receive a unique certificate uh, signed by the LEC director and HEC rector. And the um, main part of this certificate you can see on the slide uh, that um, confirms that um, the program satisfies the uh, best uh, British and international standards. Uh, then uh, the core of our faculty uh, full-time academics, full-time faculty members with PhDs from leading universities around the world, uh, from the United States, uh, continental Europe, UK. Then uh, some of our courses are taught by visiting faculties, for visiting faculty uh, members, including from um, LEC, Oxford, and other international universities. And of course, our exams. Uh, so we follow the British tradition and we have external examiners. Uh, external examiners monitor our exams and our external examiners are appointed by the International Academic Committee of ISAF, the typically LSC academics. And um, students of our program uh, get unique opportunities for international academic mobility. Let me um, say a few words about it. I'll let me tell you, give you more details about it. Uh, typically, our students spend the first year in Moscow at the um, ISEF, but they have an opportunity to spend 
one or two semesters in their second year at one of the partner universities. Uh, we have uh, HSC, so it can be a university with which uh, High School of Economics has a partnership agreement, or it can be a special partnership agreement of ISEC. HSC has uh, agreements with Humboldt University in Berlin, with Sorbonne in France, uh, with um, Erasmus University in Rotterdam, and the ISEF has um, several, uh, several agreements of its own with Tilburg University, with the University of Essex, and especially we have uh, with Lewis. Lewis is a leading uh, private uh, Italian university, and we have um, not just a partnership agreement, we have a double degree program um, with Lewis. So, um, that's, uh, the program started in 2000, uh, 2017, last year, and uh, students spent uh, the first year at the home university and the second year at the partner university, and at the end they get two degrees from both universities. Um, and we expect uh, five students from both universities to participate in this double degree program. So five students from Lewis will come to Moscow in summer 2017. Uh, five students from ISEF will go to Lewis also, sorry, in summer 2018. And uh, five students from ISEF will also go to Lewis in 2018. They will spend the 2018-2019 uh, academic year there. And they will get two degrees. They will defend the master thesis at both universities and they will get two, two master degrees. And uh, moreover, uh, moreover, um, ISF, uh, all HSC students actually have additional opportunities for academic mobility. They can apply themselves to um, universities around the world. And if we believe that the university you were admitted uh, is a good university and um, it's, um, it offers education in uh, economics or finance, then uh, you can um, study, um, uh, you can have an individual study plan for the second year, and uh, if you study at the one-year master's program, then you can get also two degrees uh, from both universities, HSC, and the university you apply to. Of course, uh, if you apply on your own, you will need to pay the tuition there, but um, uh, you may know that many universities in continental Europe offer uh, inexpensive and sometimes almost free one-year programs in English, and the number, um, the number of these, uh, these programs is growing, so you can take advantage of these opportunities. So if you, uh, if you go, if you use one of the partnership agreements, so if you go to Lewis, Sorbonne, etc., then you don't have to pay fish. You only need to pay uh, for your living expenses. But we also have uh, some, you know, some support, some financial support for these uh, studies abroad. Uh, okay, this is a photograph. This is a picture of a, a Nobel laureate, Christopher Pissaridis from LAC, uh, who um, participated in the graduation ceremony in 2016 at uh, ISEF. So, our graduation ceremonies are always held at the residence of the British ambassador in Moscow, which is a really beautiful mansion in the center of Moscow. Okay, now let me tell you more, let me tell you more, give you more details about the structure of the program. Uh, first of all, we have core courses and elective courses. Core courses include the, um, the key uh, economics and uh, financial economics courses such as microeconomics, macroeconomics, econometrics, asset pricing, corporate finance, and financial econometrics. Uh, in, the first, uh, in the first year, students mostly take uh, required courses, the core courses, micro, macro, econometrics, and asset pricing. In the second year, uh, students take uh, corporate finance, financial econometrics, and several electives. So the whole list, the current list of electives you can see here, and uh, most of them are applied finance courses, 
for such as derivatives, fixed income, risk management, investment analysis. But we also offer some academic courses, uh, such as topics in international trade and development. And uh, uh, many of our courses, even though they're applied, they're quite technical. They're quite technical. Many of them are, some of them are taught by practitioners. Some of them, many of them are taught by uh, PhD educated academics. And um, they're not just blah, blah, blah. So they, they, um, they're quite rigorous. Okay. And Professor Dara Kiris, who will uh, speak after me, he teaches one of his courses, uh, course in international finance. So he may tell you more detail about it. Okay, now, uh, our faculty. Uh, as I said, uh, the core of our faculty are full-time ISF academics um, with the Western education, uh, with PhD degrees from uh, universities in the United States, such as the University of California at Berkeley, Caltech, uh, University of Texas at Austin, United Kingdom, including LSC and Oxford, and the continental Europe, such as Bocconi, Alicante, Toulouse School of Economics. Okay, so if you like, if you like uh, logos, you can see logos of all these universities here. Okay, these are some of our international academics, and you see that we have um, our faculty come uh, from different uh, parts of the world. Uh, Fabian Slaninchik is from Argentina. Emiliano Catonini and Luca Gelsomini are Italians. Marcus Gibauer is uh, German. Vincent Fardo is French. And Dodara Peris, who will speak after me, is a, a citizen of uh, Sri Lanka and Australia. And, uh, but he was educated in, in the United Kingdom. Okay, okay, this is uh, our most, um, uh, most um, well-known professor, Alexei Bulatov, who is the full university professor. He is uh, one of the leading world experts in uh, financial markets mark microstructure. Um, he published in top journals, such as Review of Economic Studies, Review of Financial Studies, Okay, uh, now visiting the faculty from Western schools. So you can see a list of our visiting professors. Uh, many of them come from LEC, like um, Chris Juliard, who we see here, but we they also come from uh, Oxford, like Dimitri Tsamotos, uh, Svetlana Brzgala, we saw own graduate who got her PhD from LEC, and now she is at, um, she's a faculty member at Stanford Graduate School of Business. Okay, as I said, we also have some practitioners, but our practitioners typically, almost always, have some Western background, some Western education. It can be PhD, it can be MBA or master's degree. Uh, some of them, like Vyacheslav Ivanov, got their bachelor and MBA degree from the Western, Western schools. Okay, alumni careers. Uh, our program is in financial economics, and so most of our graduates work at banks and other financial institutions, more than half of them. Um, recently, uh, many of our graduates work at uh, strategic consultancies, such as uh, McKinsey, BCG, Bain. Uh, small but uh, uh, cherished group of graduates uh, pursue, continue their education. They go to PhD programs in the United States and Western Europe, and some work in the real sector, in the government, and some start their own business. But again, our program is in financial economics, and so naturally most of our graduates pursue a career in finance. Okay? And now here you see, again, if you like logos, you can see logos of um, uh, some leading uh, international banks, uh, universal banks, investment banks. Uh, uh, what I want to mention that uh, many of our graduates find jobs not only in Moscow, 
but also in London, the city of London, including uh, Morgan Stanley, Barclays, KD Swiss. Right now, 15 program graduates work in London, and seven of them get jobs there right after the program. So they apply to these jobs from Moscow, and they were invited for an interview, and um, they, got a, they got a job offer, and now they work in London. And um, if you look at our uh, Moscow-based um, graduates, they work at Goldman Sachs, they work at JP Morgan, at uh, Merrill Lynch, uh, many work at uh, Sberbank CIB, at Waterberg Capital, Renaissance Capital, etc. Okay? And recently, uh, Korean strategic consultancy has become uh, quite popular. Um, many work at McKinsey, and uh, also some of our graduates work at uh, uh, financial consultancies such as Oliver Wyman. Okay, uh, a small but growing number of our graduates continue their education in uh, pursue their PhD degree, PhD studies in the United States, uh, California, Berkeley, California, San Diego, um, Minnesota, Duke, in the United Kingdom, and in continental Europe, in such places as Tilburg, Bocconi, Toulouse School of Economics, and Gallen. Okay, um, here you can see some examples of our alumni, and you can see uh, career paths of our alumni. So Svetlana Brezgalov, I already mentioned her, our superstar. She was um, our first cohort graduate in 2009. Then she got her PhD from the London School of Economics. Uh, she had an um, incredibly successful job market. She got more than 20 job offers. And she accepted the job offer from the Stanford Business School, which is really uh, number one or number two business school in the world. Artyom Pateshkin, our second cohort student graduate. He was actually our first graduate who got a job in London at Barclays. And um, he got uh, several promotions there. Now he's associated at Barclays Capital in London. Konstantin Vikimovich, uh, he, um, while he was a student at ISAF, he got a job at Fitch Ratings. But then he was transferred to London uh, now he works at Fitch Ratings in London. Okay. Um, our graduates uh, are so successful because we have an uh, ISAF Career Center who really helps our students to start their career. They organize various workshops on how to start a career, how to find an internship, how to apply for a job how to write a CV, how to write a cover letter, etc. They conduct lots of individual consultations and they invite, um, they organize uh, employer's presentation, including uh, meetings with the successful ICF alumni. Successful ICF alumni are uh, quite often uh, potential employers, so they come, they talk um, about their job, about their career path, they conduct mock interviews for the students and uh, get their CVs. And that's how our, our students get the internships and, internships and jobs. And of course, we also have some electives uh, from employers, uh, including McKinsey and Deloitte. And of course, we also help our um, students who want career in academia. Uh, we have a special advanced research program that is specifically designed to um, help our students to start doing research. Uh, this program is designed for those students who want an academic career, and Professor Dara Paris is the head of this program. He may tell you a few words about it. Uh, at the same time, we offer um, opportunities for our students to earn some money, uh, during their studies, uh, our students can work as assistants in the research laboratories. Uh, they can you know, work as teaching assistants. Uh, 
including marking homework assignments, uh, uh, teaching seminars for undergraduate students, etc. Okay. Okay, now you see some nice pictures that show uh, that our students are not nerds. So they do many different things and uh, besides studies. Okay, now I see uh, there are questions. Um, okay, let me start answering some of the questions. Uh, English proficiency, I will, tell, I, will, I will talk about them later. I will talk about it later on. What are the opportunities for visiting another country in the context of program? What documents I should have for this? Okay, first, you don't worry about it. You apply to our program. Once you admit it, we will tell you all the details. You will apply uh, for all these mobility programs during your first year. Does it depend on my grades? Yes, of course. Uh, students with better grades have a priority. Now, admission. So we have a national admission track, international admission track, and international admission track. Uh, so for the national admission, we have now 35 places uh, financed by the Russian government budget, and there are also 10 uh, fee-paying fee places. Uh, tuition fee is 360,000 rubles per year, which means uh, a little bit more than 6,000 US dollars, which is much less than in uh, most universities in, much less uh, than in most universities in the US, in, uh, in the UK, and in many European universities. And moreover, we have discounts, so we have, this year we should have eight places with 75% discount, so it will be 90,000 rubles plus we will have a, we have a, a scholarship program uh, financed by uh, VTB Bank, one of the leading Russian banks, our partners, and uh, with, this, uh, with the discount and the scholarship you can essentially have all your tuition covered. Now for international admission we also have uh, up to 10 fee paying places and uh, we have three places with full tuition waiver. So they are financed by the Russian government. Okay, now um, international, more details about international admissions in 2018. Uh, you can basically, you can already apply now and um, you can apply up until July 15. So you need to send uh, English uh, English certificate, either IELTS or TOEFL, and our requirements are not very tough, so if you get 6.0 at IELTS or 80 at IBT TOEFL, then you are fine. Then you also need to send uh, your CV, motivation letter, of course diplomas and transcripts, and at least one writing sample. And we suggest that you also send some recommendation letters, but this is not obligatory. Uh, now, with, uh, we conduct Skype interviews with uh, shortlisted candidates, and um, if you are successful, you will, get a, you will get an admission offer. Okay, then we have um, several Olympiads. Actually, the number of Olympiads grow by the month, and um, <coughs> uh, the winners and prize winners of Olympiads will be also we also get an opportunity to study uh, with a with a full scholarship with tuition waiver okay plus we if you have uh, if you have if you have taken these international exams GRE subject test in math and GRE general or GMAT and have high scores then you also get automatic admission and depending on the time of your application you will get either uh, this um, water place or uh, you will get full, full, full scholarship, uh, a discount and full scholarship. Okay, now this is the picture from one of our graduations and you can see here uh, some important people including um, Sergei Yakovlev, the director, Alexander Shokin, the head of uh, uh, Union of Russian Industrialists, and next to him is Paul Kelly, um, the pro-director of OLC. Okay, uh, 
let me, okay, actually I'm done. I'm done with my presentation, so let me, let me answer your questions. Uh, how can I get ready for Skype interview? And is there any exam besides interview? No, there are no exams. So if you take, well, some other exam in, some international exam in, say, mathematics or economics, you can send it in. We will consider it, but um, this will be just one. Uh, this may be a part of your portfolio. How can you get ready for Skype interview? Well, um, we um, basically do not expect our candidates to be, to be ready for the interview. We can ask you various questions about your background. If we suspect you don't know math well, we can ask you some questions on mathematics, um, or calculus, linear algebra, whatever. Okay, so it depends on whether our um, colleagues who conduct this interview suspect that you may have some gaps in your education. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Uh, can I apply for government scholarship for this program from staying in Russia? Uh, I guess if you are uh, studying in Russia now, then yes, you can apply, yes. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if there are no questions yet, I will um, um, let my colleague, Professor Udara Peris, uh, to give his views on ISAF and your, uh, your prospects, okay? Okay, just one second, Professor Peris will be here in a minute. Hello, <coughs> hello everyone. I uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, do I need to press? No. Um, so I'm going to give you a slightly different um, presentation. It's not about admissions or um, about the structure of the program so much, but a bit about myself, um, what I do at ISEF, um, what I teach at ISEF, and uh, a special program that I've been involved in running for the last few years, which hopefully will interest uh, many of you, um, both to apply and once you apply to engage with, uh, once you arrive at ISA. So, um, <clears throat> to start off, I was uh, born in Sri Lanka and I grew up in Australia. Um, I did my, uh, finished my bachelor's degree and then I moved on to the UK where I did my graduate studies um, and I worked also uh, at the University of Warwick for two years and now I'm in Moscow and I've been here since 2012. I was awarded my PhD in financial economics um, from the Said Business School at the University of Oxford. Um, and currently I'm a tenured associate professor of finance. As I said. Um, if you have any questions as I go along, feel free to ask, and um, I'll try and stop if it's relevant to the slide that I'm on. So in terms of um, what I do, well, you know, my primary role is um, to do research, uh, to extend the body of knowledge, um, um, to make scientific contributions, and so research is really a big part of who I am and what I do at ISA. Um, and ISAF is primarily uh, what I would call a research department. It's not a teaching institution and sometimes it's something that's not quite appreciated or understood by students. Definitely when I was doing my studies, I didn't really understand or appreciate why this is important. Um, the reason this is important is because the people that are teaching you, you want them really to be at the, the forefront or the cutting edge of knowledge. Um, the world is always changing. Uh, we've seen, especially in the last 10 years, even the last two, three years, big changes happening, um, not only in the political sphere, but also in the economic sphere. So we've had changes in the way policy has been conducted. We've seen changes in um, how trade agreements have been set. And what's important is that when you graduate from a program, especially a master's program, 
you're, you graduate with the skills which are necessary to really deal with these changes that have occurred and will occur in the future. So when you're taught by people that are doing research and at the cutting edge of knowledge, then really you're the, as best equipped as possible um, to deal with these changes going forward. Okay. Um, now, my research in particular deals with the interaction between the financial markets and um, the macroeconomy. Um, and in particular, I've, my recent projects have looked at unconventional monetary policy, such as quantitative easing, which has been um, going on in the US, UK, and Europe. Um, I've looked at uh, financial stability and macroprudential regulation. So basically, how do we regulate the banks? Um, and uh, also the link between capital flows and sovereign default. So all topics which um, are quite pertinent, um, especially for the last few years. And really, I'm interested in not just explaining why things have happened, but how we can um, think about policies which can improve upon what the financial markets uh, can achieve. Okay, my research uh, is not just done for myself in my own spare time. For my own benefit, I've presented my research at policy institutions such as the IMF, um, the Federal Reserve, the US, uh, the Bank of England, Central Bank of Russia, Reserve Bank of Australia, many universities and conferences. Um, and I've published in many internationally respected journals. And um, my research is reflected in my teaching to the MSc students. So I have a question. Um, why am I interested in my topic of research? Um, well, it's something that was uh, draw I was curious about, I guess, from my time of my bachelor's. Um, I very much, well, I understood that the financial markets and the economy are very important for people's lives. And I thought that it would be nice to understand how um, you know, the government and the markets can be set up in such a way to make people better. Um, so it really came from a sense of just observing the world around me. And I guess I've been motivated since that time to understand and explore these issues further and further. Um, um, and I guess as the world is changing and I'm exposed to different issues, uh, the particular sort of area that I'm looking at a specific issue may change, but the general premise is something I've just always been curious about and passionate about. Um, there's also a question of why I moved to Russia. Uh, so one reason, um, I think Professor Nikitin has mentioned, uh, ISAF really is a very strong and impressive department. So when I finished my PhD, I was looking for opportunities um, around the world where I would be able to conduct my own research and be um, encouraged and supported. Um, so I do a lot, quite a lot of traveling through this. And also, um, we have to teach uh, as academics, and I want to really be around students that are smart and motivated. And having taught undergraduates in the UK and in Oxford, I really wanted to be around, around students that are that, that strong. Um, and at ISEF, um, at the master's program as well as the bachelor's program, we really do get some of the best students in the world. Uh, this is not you know, me trying to promote the program. It's just something I tell everybody because it's the truth. Um, Russia in particular, I knew nothing about. So it was, this was all sort of a, an experience for me, um, an adventure. But I knew about ISEF before because of the reputation it has um, definitely in the UK. Um, so that's what got me interested and in, in explored it. And I was quite happy with the move. So you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so let me continue. Um, so my teaching, so my research is very much integrated um, with the course that I teach in the master's program, which is international finance. So this, pro, this course is uh, kind of a, an intersection between international macroeconomics and international finance. Um, international macroeconomics, uh, in the sense that I start with trade, basic things of basically how to account for trade, what is the trade balance, um, what is the current account, what is the capital account. So we learn about all these basic issues and from that I take the course on to 
ultimately discussing issues on financial stability and capital flows. So it's a second year elective course um, and it's designed to provide an analytical framework. So rather than to give you quick and easy answers, it gives you a framework or a lens to think about international finance issues. Um, now, uh, I really want the courses that I teach, both at the past and the bachelor's level, to be ones where five years later I'll meet you somewhere and you'll tell me that uh, this course is something that you're still using, you still appreciate, and it's benefited your career. And I've been fortunate that when I've met um, several graduates recently, they've all sort of said the same thing. So this course is meant to be practical. Um, we start, we, we work with a lot of real world issues. We, we talk about um, things that are going on on the day, so often we pull out what the reports on the financial markets and look at what's happening to exchange rates and interest rates um, at that moment. Um, so uh, the course is meant to be useful, but it's also rigorous enough and gives a rigorous enough framework which says such that it's going to be useful even if you're going to go on to a PhD. Um, so we understand what capital flows mean, whether they're sustainable, we we'll learn about exchange rates, what determines them, um, how to forecast them, and we study sovereign debt and default episodes, um, and what causes them, and also the interaction between capital flows and the banking system. So much of what's happened in Europe in the last few years, particularly in places like Greece, um, has been to do with this. Um, and finally, we talk a lot about policy tools and the constraints that policymakers face. Um, so if there were easy answers, they'd, they'd already been implemented. Um, so as I said, it's a very general framework that I use throughout the course, um, and it provides a lens for students to utilize uh, once they go into industry. Um, and this framework that I teach is essentially the same framework that I use for my own research. So this is um, one aspect of how my research reinforces my teaching. The second is uh, the recent papers that I work on also tends to adjust the course. So I try to ask the students what topics they want to study, and also I modify the course every year based on um, what my recent projects are. So the course is always being updated. Uh, so the second thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the advanced research program. So this is a very special program, uh, unique to ISEF, um, and it's something that is coming from the observation that I said before that we get some of the best, um, brightest, and most motivated students in the world. And we honestly believe that not only is it important for the professors to be research active, it's important for the students to be research active. So. Um, you know, when you've, you've all, I guess, done bachelor's or completing your bachelor's degree, when you're doing a course, you may get homework assignments, you listen to the lectures, uh, lectures, you read the lecture slides, but essentially it's one-way information. You get information from them, and that information is absorbed by you. Uh, but you don't really understand why this is the material that you should be learning. Um, it also doesn't explain to you why something else isn't being taught. Um, nor what else there is to know about this particular issue. And the only way you can uh, learn these things is by conducting your own study. And this is essentially what we mean by research uh, at the student's level. It's, a <clears throat> it's an opportunity for you to learn how to learn. And this skill, whether you're not you go to a PhD, is not essential, but the skill of being able to learn what you need to learn is going to be valuable to whatever you do. Um, the, you know, in, when you go into industry and work in banks, I have many friends that are quite, at the quite senior levels now, um, at some of the top investment banks, and the ones that have made, made it to this level are the ones that are always, you know, thinking quick and um, trying to understand the directions the market is facing and not just doing what they've been doing every day for the last 10 years. So in order to be at the cutting edge, you need to be able to have this skill. Um, so the advanced research program uh, is uh, something that complements the requirements of the MSc, which is that in the first year you need to write a, um, a paper, uh, a coursework paper, which is essentially like a literature review or a summary of what 
you research you intend to do in the second year, and in the second year you need to submit a full dissertation. Um, so this is kind of a fun and slash daunting experience because you need to do a comprehensive uh, research study, which you have to defend in front of academics. Um, and this is really going to sort of uh, showcase everything that you've learned from us and everything that you've learned uh, perhaps because of us or supported by us. But to do effective research is not something you can really do in your own room, especially social sciences, economics, finance research. Um, to do you know, uh, good research, thorough research requires a community um, of peers. You need people to discuss your research with them, to understand the subtleties of what you're doing, and it requires time. So the advanced research program supplements or complements um, your dissertation work by having regular seminars and skills workshops, so you'll see what other people are doing, you'll enhance your skills. There are student conferences and presentations, so you get a chance to present your own research and present and receive feedback from both professors and uh, other students. You'll get many more interactions with ISA professors um, than you would otherwise, and also for those that are interested in going out to PhD programs, you'll get advice and support uh, for those applications. It's quite a complicated process to uh, get into a good PhD program, um, so we provide time and support for that. Uh, so, you know, to emphasize, the point of the program isn't to get people into the PhD program, though we've been fortunate every year to get several people into top PhD programs in the past but it's really to d help you to develop the skill of learning how to learn um, and the skills which will benefit you whether you're going to go to industry or academia. Uh, so that's all I've got. Uh, you can see my personal website there and um, there's a HSC website with all of my details as well. I'm happy to field any other questions if they're out there. So there's a few questions which I think Professor Nikki can could, uh, help with. Okay, so then I'll leave you to it and I wish you all the best and hope to see you at ISF uh, next September. Okay, thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, let me let me answer your questions about admissions. If I studied mathematics and statistics during bachelor degree, do I need to take GRE? Okay, so you don't. Uh, it's not a. It's not a. It's not an. Okay, it's not a requirement for you to take GRE. So you can uh, you can you can get admission if you take GRE subject and GRE general, but. You can go through the usual route, through the standard route, through portfolio competition, uh, without taking jury. Okay, and of course, we'll take into account that we studied mathematics and statistics. This, this will be a big plus for you. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, do I need to pay for exchange program? Uh, you don't need to pay the tuition. So if you pay tuition in Moscow, in Russia, at ISEF, then that's the only tuition you will need to pay. Uh, so you will be responsible only for your living expenses in a country where you study. Okay? Okay. Uh, any other questions? Okay. I see there are no more questions, so... I wish you all the best in your application. Okay. Uh, are there students' dormitories for international students? Yes, of course. All our students uh, can get a place in a dormitory, yes. And actually, international students get the best dormitories. Okay. Okay. Best of luck and Hope to see your applications. Okay? Bye.